Hey guys, this is Adam and I'm back with another resource management templates video. This time I will show you how to parameterize your templates using parameters, variables and expressions. Stay tuned! Our focus today will be on expressions, parameters and variables. While the parameterization topic is much bigger, those three are the building blocks for all the additional features that you can use to parameterize your templates. That's why they are focused for today. Let's talk expression first. If you have a template that deploys a storage account, you can use expression to parameterize that template. And in simple terms, expression is just dynamically executed code, which you can invoke by using square brackets. And within those square brackets, you can use functions to parameterize your templates. There are a lot of functions that you can use within ARM templates, but their general purpose is to calculate dynamic values for your template. It is important to note that because those functions are being evaluated during the deployment and they will always compute some sort of value that will be replaced in the template during the deployment itself. And there are many things you can actually parameterize, so let's grab a few examples. If you are deploying services that always require unique name within subscription, region or maybe globally, unique string generation is a really good example. You can use unique string function pass an entry string parameter and it will generate random string for you based on that input string. It is important to note it will always return the same string, the same unique string for the same input value. But it is amazing when it comes to generating random names for your resources. So you don't get collision during the deployment. Another great example is resource group function, allowing you to access information about resource group that you are currently performing deployment into. It will return you an object with all the properties describing the current resource group and you can actually access properties of that object by typing dot and the name of the property which will return you the value of the property. So in this case it would return North Europe. Very often during the deployment you will find yourself in a need to create a dynamic name for a resource and concatenate multiple strings. To do that you can use concat function which grabs multiple parameters and concatenates them into a single string. While there are many more functions, one of the cool things is that you can actually nest functions and use them as a parameters to another function. Let's take this unique string as an example. If you're gonna pass a parameter of 1 to 3 to that function, it will return a random string. You can then use unique string as a part of concatenation function to ensure that you actually create some sort of naming convention for your storage accounts and still give that unique part to the name to ensure the deployment will not fail because of the name collision for the storage account. There are dozens of functions that you can actually use here and you can pretty much combine all of the things that I showed you right now to create any kind of ARM templates to fit your business needs. While there are many more possibilities with the expression itself, one another key thing about parameterization of the templates are parameters. This is your way to provide input values for the template. They are defined within their own section called parameters where you define a unique name for a parameter. Like in this case, it's account name. And each parameter definition is an object with only one mandatory property of type, which defines the data type for your parameter. It can be a string, integer, boolean, secure string, which basically obfuscates the information from the template logs. It can be an array or even an object. Once the parameter is defined, you can actually start referring it within your template. From this point onward, you can call it anywhere within a template using an expression and calling parameters function and passing the name of the defined parameter. So that during the deployment, if user passes a storage 1 to 3 AM as a parameter, Azure Resource Manager will use that value and put it in the right place wherever you defined it in your template. As you see, the idea is simple. So what are the additional features that you get here? First of all, you can define default values. So if user doesn't specify an account name during the deployment, my storage 1 to 3 will be taken as a default value. While the type is your first way of validating the input parameters, allowed values is another way. This allows you to create a static list of all the available options for this parameter. This is a great way to create an initial validation for all the options or allow only specific values for your templates. This allows you to ensure the quality of the parameters that are being passed or maybe restrict some of the options available to your users. And there are a lot of different types that you can use here like strings, boolean values, integers or even complex objects which are JSON defined objects. You can use arrays and arrays can contain different types. You can also 
get some additional features like min value and max value for some integer validations. You can use min length and max length for arrays and strings, or you can use metadata to describe some of the parameters. There's a lot of options that you can actually play around to make sure the parameters for your templates are as generic as possible while maintaining the quality of the past parameters. Which brings us to our last topic, variables. So if you already know how to use parameters and you know how to use expressions, you can achieve pretty much anything within your templates. So what is the variables? Imagine a scenario where you already use your parameters called account name. You then use a concatenate function to add a backup suffix to this name. And this is your name of the storage account. You can actually move this into variable section, which is your centralized place to define all the calculated values and reuse them across the template. This allows you to have very clean templates, very readable templates, and still maintain all that flexibility by using parameters and expressions. This is a highly recommended approach for building pretty much any ARM template. The most common examples of using variables is for instance randomizing names which allows you to create a unique names for your resources whenever deploying them from ARM template while still maintaining that flexibility. And the second example that I find myself very often using is adding a prefix or a suffix to my environment or service names. This allows me to ensure the proper quality and naming convention of my application resources across multiple environments. Which brings me to benefits. There's a lot of benefits for parameterizing your templates. For instance, you will be able to reuse your templates across multiple services, multiple environments, and multiple projects. You will also eliminate human errors, because it is almost inevitable that at some point a human who will need to perform the same deployment over and over will make a mistake. That's it's just in our nature. You will also be able to modularize your templates. You will have easier maintenance and you have very clean, very readable code that you can very easily see what are the components currently used within your application? What are the typical scenarios? Well, it's easy for me to say, but I would say always. You should always build ARM templates whenever you're developing in Azure. It will really go a long run. Automation is another option. You can use it for DevOps. You can do environment migrations. And you can even create a reference architectures for your companies so that other projects can see what are the typical scenarios and typical configuration for the resources that they should be using within their projects? It is a really good way to apply some security measures also and ensure the quality of the configuration of your resources. But with all that said, let's get into demos. I have a couple of demos for you today, but most of all, they are about expressions and testing of those expressions. And then we're going to expand by using parameters and variables. I'm going to show you how to use all of those combined to get most out of your ARM templates. So let's go to the portal. Before we begin, let's go to the create resource and type template to find the template deployment and let's actually pin it to dashboard so we can very quickly access it during the demos. And we're gonna be using that extensively today. And let's go to the Visual Studio code where we're gonna start creating our template. Let's create a new file, let's call it arm.json and let's initialize new template by using scaffolding. So type arm, tabulator, and it's gonna create a new template. I will actually revert the schema version to 2015.01.01 as it's the recommended version for template deployment for the resource groups. I'm gonna actually expand this a little bit and I'm gonna remove sections that we don't need right now. So I'm gonna remove this function section and I'm gonna remove parameters and variables. So let's just leave resources. Let's open this section and paste the standard template for the storage account. I'm actually going to use the one that I prepared previously. So I'm going to use this. So let's look at this template. The type is Microsoft Storage Storage Account. So we're going to deploy the storage account. It's going to have a static name just to show you the principle. And then we're going to use the parameters to parameterize the template. Let's grab this template right now and let's go to the portal to the template deployment. Let's hit create. Hit build on your own template, paste it in, hit save, and let's deploy that. I'm going to actually full screen this so get more real estate. Let's expand, let's use resource group called ARM parameterization. Scroll down, hit I agree to the terms, and hit purchase. We've got some validation errors, and that was expected. If I'm going to click on this, I will very quickly see the storage account with that name that I picked AM demo storage intro 01 is already taken. And I did that on purpose. So we actually have a reason to parameterize this. 
Let's parameterize the name so that it doesn't collide with already existing resources. Let's use the expression to do that. So as I said, invoke using square brackets. And within square brackets, we are ready to go and ready to use functions. I'm going to use unique string. As you see, IntelliSense will tell me there's a function called like that. You can press tab and I need to pass any input parameter. And there are a lot of ways to do that. You can either pass a static string like one, two, three, but this will always return the same value. So you can pass something more dynamic, like accessing a resource group information and passing the ID. Since each resource group has its own unique ID, this unique string will be different for each resource group that you're gonna perform the deployment to, but it will always be the same for the same resource group, allowing you to update the storage account since the name generated will always be the same within this resource group. So let's grab this updated template and let's go back to the portal. Let's actually hit edit template. Let's paste the new one. Let's hit save. Leave everything as default. Scroll down again and agree the terms and hit purchase. Now wait for the deployment. Once the deployment finishes, you can actually go to the resource group, but first let's review the deployment itself. By clicking this link, you go to the deployment, you can expand and notice first of all, what is the uniquely generated name of the storage account that we've got, that it deployed successfully. You can review the input, as you see we have no input and no outputs, and you can review the deployed template. If you actually go to the overview, you can navigate to the resource group to see your newly created storage account. As I said, if you would deploy the template again, it would not create a new storage account with the new name, it would actually update the existing one, because this unique string will always be the same for this resource group, if you're gonna pass an ID as a parameter. So is there any way for you to know what is the name that will be picked up before you actually execute? Is there any way that you can actually see what the expressions are returning before you deploy anything into Azure? And the answer is yes, you can. You can actually create a new file. Let me create an arm2.json and create a template like this, which deploys no resources at all, but uses an output to return an expression, in which case unique string over resource group ID. And if you try to deploy that, you would be able to see in the outputs without actually impacting any resources in your Azure environment. So let's try this. If we go into enter Azure portal and hit on the deployment, hit create again, build your own template, paste it in, hit save. Notice actually nothing happened and the purchase button is grayed out. The reason for that is this custom deployment doesn't actually allow you to perform deployment with no resources, but you can actually do it and execute it using Cloud Shell or PowerShell or CLI. So let's go to the Cloud Shell and let's create a new file called arm.json. And within that file, let's paste the template. Once you have the template, you can actually press Ctrl Q to close it. And let's paste the script to create the deployment. So first of all, we're going to create the resource group called ARM03 in North Europe, and then perform AZ group deployment create, passing the resource group name and the ARM.json as a parameter. After about the 30 seconds, the deployment is done. You can either review outputs here in the JSON response, finding the unique string and the value that it calculated, or you can hide the cloud shell, go to your resource groups, find the ARM03 resource group and open it, open the deployments and find the ARM deployment that we just created, click on it and go to the outputs to review unique string and the string that we generated. And this is pretty much the same as in template, we define the unique string output and pasted the expression there. And you can use this method to review the results of the expressions if you are unsure what kind of results you're gonna get and you don't want to mess you with your resources in your Azure resource group. So let's do one more quick demo using outputs. I'm gonna paste a bit more complicated template where I'm gonna create four output parameters. RG for resource group, I'm gonna pass resource group.id. I'm gonna run unique string over that ID and I'm gonna do the same for the deployment.name and then do deployment unique string over that. I want to show you how the scope of the unique string changes whenever the value changes. So let's grab this template. Let's go again to the cloud shell. Let's open the code editor. 
Let's paste the template, let's hit save, Control q to close, and let's run the deployment again. Let's paste in the script that I prepared, this one creates ARM04 group, again in North Europe, and runs two deployments. One thing to note, this time I'm passing additional parameter called name, and passing demo1. This is not the parameter for the template, this is just a name for the entire deployment. So let's run both of those. Once the script is done, I prepared a very small listing with query, which will return the, all the outputs from all the deployments that we just did. So we don't actually have to go to the deployment of the group and check it ourselves. So as you see, the resource group was this. As you see, before, because our resource group name didn't change, the ID didn't change, the unique string also didn't change. But because the second unique string was basing on a deployment name and we changed the deployment name across those two deployments, the unique string deployment changed. This is how you can create scopes using the unique string. Remember, it's a very valuable lesson depending on what kind of unique name you want to generate for your resources. Since we know how to use expressions, we can actually go into parameterization using parameters. So let's go to our basic ARM template for the storage account and instead of using unique name generated here, let's use parameters. So let's create a new section called parameters and this is of course an object. Within that object, let's start defining parameters. I'm gonna create a parameter called account name. And this is also an object. Within that object, as I said, you always need to specify type. This is the only mandatory property. And as you said, you see, you have a couple of things you can actually pass here. Secure strings and secure objects are basically just obfuscated objects and strings. For now, we're gonna use a string since this is the name of the account. And now that we define the parameter, we can start using it. Go and remove that expression and start using function called parameters. And you can now, as you see, IntelliSense actually picks up that you have parameter called account name, which you can use here. So let's press enter. And as you see, squiggly lines went away because you are now using. It was just a warning that you defined a parameter that you never used, which is another cool feature of using Visual Studio. Let's grab this template, which is currently parameterized. So let's go to the portal. We can now close the cloud shell. Let's go back to the dashboard and perform a new template deployment. Let's hit create, build your own template and paste in the template. Notice that first of all, it already recognizes that there are resources deployed and we have new parameters defined. If you hit save, you're gonna find the new parameters available for you to for the template deployment. Let's select the resource group ARM parameterization and notice in the setting section, it recognized that you have some parameters that you can use here. And you can actually start using that in, and pasting the values. For instance, am demo store 01 AA. And I can hit agree and hit purchase. So let's wait for the deployment. Once the deployment is finished, let's go to the resource group. Let's hit refresh. Always remember there's a slight delay, but we already see our parameterized storage account created. Let's go back to Visual Studio. So what else can we do here? For instance, we can create validations. We can create a min length and specify that minimum length of the account name must be three characters. We can also use max length to define the maximum length is 24 characters. Additionally, if we want, we can add something called metadata. And metadata will describe what is this parameter for. So let's paste it this and give it a unique DNS name of your storage account. So let's copy paste that template and let's go back to the portal to the template deployment. Let's hit save and notice what's the difference. First of all, you have this eye icon here, the information giving you the description from the metadata object about the parameter. This is pretty cool if you're sharing the templates across your teams so they can actually very easily read what are those parameters for. Additionally, if I'm gonna type only one character here, notice that the validation works saying you that you need to provide at least three characters for the name. So it is a validation before the deployment, which is very neat. Let's go back to the template. What else can we do? We can, for instance, define a parameter for the SKU of the storage account. By creating another object, this will be also an object of type of string. And we can, for instance, use allowed values to specify what are the allowed values for this storage SKU. 
I'm gonna paste in the allowed values with two values, standard LRS and standard GRS, and additional metadata about the approved SKUs for the deployment. Notice that the squiggly line is there because we defined the parameter we never used it, which is a very nice reminder from the Visual Studio IntelliSense. So let's go to the SKU and use it. Let's remove value, open square brackets, type parameters tab, and then pick storage account SKU. If everything is working, we can actually copy paste this, go back to the portal, hit edit template, paste the latest template, Notice that it already recognized two parameters, hit save. There's a new parameter that you can now choose. And because you specified allowed values, it actually gives you a dropdown that you can pick that you will use for the deployment. That is pretty cool. But before we deploy that, let's maybe add one more parameter. What else can we do with parameters? Let's create a parameter called location. And a location is also an object. This is also a string since location is a name of the location. But this time we're going to use a default value and we're going to use expression to initialize that default value. So we can use the default value for the location of deployed service will be the same as the location of our resource group. Remember squiggly lines? That means we never used it. So let's not forget about it. So let's remove the location here and paste in the parameters and use the parameters called location. Now you have very highly parameterized template. You could probably parameterize more, but this is enough for our example. So let's grab this. Let's go to the portal, edit template, paste the latest template, hit save. Now we have three parameters. So let's just give it a name. AM demo store 01 BB agree to the terms and hit purchase. We didn't pick up the resource group, so we need to select ARM parameterization and hit purchase. Now let's wait for the deployment. Once the deployment is finished, you can go to the resource group to find your storage count. Remember all the delay, but what is most important is that you can actually go to the deployments tab to find your latest deployment, open it and review what was deployed with the template including the input parameters that were passed during the deployment of that template. And if you go back to the resource group, you will find your latest storage account deployment there. So let's go with the very last demo about using variables. For the demo of the variables, I want to create a template parameter, which will specify stage of the environment that we're currently deploying to, like development, test, QA, production. And to do that, I'm just going to quickly copy paste new parameter into the template. This parameter will be called stage, will be type of a string. The default value will be test. I'm going to allow only four values, test, dev, QA, and prod. And this is the description environment stage for our deployment. Now I need to actually start using this parameter. I could either directly use it within our resources definition, or I can create new section called variables. This section is also an object. And within this section, you can create new variables. I'm actually going to create new variable that is called the same as our parameter called account name. And once I do that, I will actually concatenate. So I'm going to use expression to concatenate two strings. I'm going to make some space for to make this very visible. And the first one is parameter and I'm gonna pass the account name parameter. And I want it to be concatenated with also another parameter. In this case, it's gonna be stage. So it will grab the name of the storage account that I passed as a parameter. It will also grab the name of the stage that I passed. It will concatenate the both, and we're gonna use that as the name of our storage account. To use that variable within the template, it's super easy to change now. Just grab the variable's name and there's equivalent name of the function called variables, which you can use. So just by replacing the name of the function, you can refer to variables in pretty much the same manner. You see, if you see the variable also has a different color coding, so you can very easily recognize whenever you're using variables or parameters within your template. 
If this is correctly done, we can actually grab this template and go back once more to the template deployment and create new template deployment and paste in the script. We have now four parameters, which everything looks fine. Hit save and specify the new account name. So am demo store one one. In this case, I'm not gonna pass anything extra. I'm gonna leave standard RRS and make a stage called dev. I hit agree and hit purchase. I need to always pick the resource group and again purchase. Since the deployment has been finished, we can go to the resource group and hit refresh. As you see, the new resource was deployed. We have a suffix dev. This allows me to consistently deploy the resources across environments and ensure that suffix about the environment name and environment stage is always there applied every single time. And inside of the deployment, you can also review the latest deployment, review the input parameters and see that I deployed the account name, what stage did I pick, there were no outputs because we didn't define anything and always review the template. Always remember that since I'm deploying using portal or deploying using CLI, remember to specify that unique deployment name or otherwise it's gonna override the history of the deployments. Other than this, you're pretty good to go. And this is how you can actually use parameters, expressions, variables, functions, and all those kind of stuff to parameterize your templates. Parameterization of your ARM templates doesn't stop here. There's so much more that you can use. You have user-defined functions, references, orchestration tools, and much, much more. We're gonna learn all about those, but that will be in another episode. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely see you next time.